Selamun Aleyküm. Bismillah. Rabbi şrahli sadri ve yassirli amri. Rabbi zidni ilma. In the name of Allah, my Lord, open up for me my chest and ease my task for me. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Now this is part two of what I've done uh, previously in part one. Understanding the Quran from within. Okay. Now this is going to be specifically targeting those verses which make mention of Allah and his messenger. Those verses that make mention of Allah and his messenger together. Okay. This is uh, part two of that. Now, when I say understanding the Quran from within, I don't mean from within our personal whims and desires. Nor am I talking about the differences of opinion amongst the scholars and all this other stuff. I'm talking about within the Quran itself. In order for us to, ex to understand the Quran, we should refer to the Quran within itself. Because the Quran, after all, does say it describes itself as what have seen the kulli shay'in, an explanation for all things. The Quran also describes itself as a clarification for all things. Allah also describes the Quran as uh, tafsira, the best explanation. So we should refer to the Quran within to get our answers and to understand what is going on. Okay? Now, moving on, inshallah. I'd like to reiterate the point I did in part one again. Okay? What Allah has revealed. Okay? Come back to this diagram here again. What Allah has revealed. Wahi. And the messenger are inseparable. What Allah has revealed and the messenger are inseparable brothers and sisters. We are not to separate and treat them independently. This is where shaitan has fooled us brothers and sisters. Okay? Just reiterating that point. Let that sink in. Okay? Here's another point I'd like to make. When Allah and his messenger are mentioned in the Quran, whenever they're mentioned in a verse, these carry one and the same meaning. Now, because unfortunately we're programmed to believe that whenever it says Allah's messenger, we have to understand them separately. We have to put Allah on this side of the scale, put the messenger on that side of the scale. So whenever Allah says something, that's one thing. Whenever the messenger says something, that's another thing. No, brothers and sisters. Whenever it says Allah and his messenger, this carries one and the same meaning. Think about this logically. Let's go to, let's go to here. Now, I know many people ask the question, I myself used to ask this question. Well, if Allah wanted us to, if obeying the messenger means to obey the Quran, why couldn't Allah just say, say in the Quran, why couldn't it just say, obey Allah, ati Allah, and just lift it at that? Think about this logically. Imagine the messenger, imagine we're there at that time, right? The messenger Muhammad comes and starts preaching to the people here. The Jews, the Mushriks, and, and the Nasara, and the Christians. Think about this. If the messenger came to them and started reciting, Ati Allah, and left it at that. No obedience to the message. Just, just said, Ati Allah. Think about this. How would the Jews have responded to this? How would they have responded? If I was Jewish, I would have said, Ya Muhammad, I don't know what you're talking about. We are obeying Allah. We've got the Torah with us. We are obeying Allah. They'll make that claim. The Christians will say something similar. We are obeying Allah. We've got the Injil. Allah sent us the... Uh, uh, Jesus and through him we, we obey the Injil. The Mushis would have said something similar. We are obeying Allah through the practices of our forefathers. But Allah stressed the importance. He said Allah and his messenger because these people, they had a problem with the messenger, didn't they? It's the messenger and the verse they bring. That's where they have had a problem because they already claimed they were obeying and, uh, Allah and following Allah. That's what Allah had to say, obey Allah and his messenger, brothers and sisters. This actually carries one and the same meaning. Because how would these people obey Allah in the first place? Take the messenger out of the equation. How would these people obey Allah? The, the, the Yahud would just say, well, I've got the Torah. But Allah has now sent down the Quran to them, didn't he? Allah wants them now to follow and obey the Quran. For them to do that, they need the messenger, brothers and sisters. Without the messenger, they can't access the Quran. Think about that. Now, moving on. Again, whenever Allah and the Messenger are mentioned, these carry one and the same meaning. And I'm going to prove this to you with numerous verses. Okay? Again, no one cares about my opinion. I'm going to show you what the Quran says. Understand the, the Quran from within, brothers and sisters. Okay, those verses which that make mention of uh, obey Allah and His Messenger. This is where all the confusion happens. Because they claim obeying Allah is to obey the Quran. And obey his messenger is to obey uh, obey something else. They usually say this is referring to the hadith and the sunnah. This is what they claim. 
Can they show me a single verse that says this? Is there any verse in the Quran which says whoever obeys the Quran has obeyed Allah or whoever obeys Allah has obeyed the Quran and whoever obeys the Messenger has obeyed the Hadith or the Sunnah? Can you show me a verse that says this? Good luck. Now, let's have a look. This is probably one of the most abused verses in the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 59. Let's see what it reads. O you who believe, obey Allah, atiya Allah, and obey the Messenger, wa atiya Rasulah, and those in authority, or those in command, wa ulil amri, among you. And if you disagree over anything, refer to Allah and His Messenger. If you should believe in Allah and the last day, that is the best way and the best result. Let's pause it for a moment. Sunni Islam claims, according to Sunni traditions, that when it says in this verse, and I remember, I remember reading this back in the day, when it says, obey Allah, that means the Quran, okay, that means the Quran, the Wahi, okay, obey the Messenger is something else, the Hadith and the Sunnah, this is what they claim, and the Ulil Amri are the scholars, this is what they typically say, think about this for a moment, let's go over, over here, when this verse first came down to the message and it recited it to the people here, is this how they understood it, brothers and sisters? Think about this. Those from this group, those who believed and followed the messenger, did they say to themselves, okay, obey Allah is the Quran, yep. Obey the messenger is the Sunnah, the Hadith and the Sunnah. Is this how they understood it? And the Ulil Amri, did they say, okay, this must be referring to the scholars? Think about this. Who knew more about Islam than the messenger did, brothers and sisters? Who were the scholars at that time? Who? Now, you might say, oh, well, the companions, you know, but who knew better than Muhammad himself, Ali Salam? Think about this. Which scholars are they referring to? And what's interesting, the Shia, they believe that the Ulil Amri are referring to their 12 Imams. <laughs> when this first was first revealed, where were, they, where were the 12 Imams? They didn't exist. How could this be referring to scholars and Imams, brothers and sisters? It's got nothing to do with it. Now, coming back here. And if you differ over anything, refer to Allah and His Messenger. Why didn't it say refer back to Allah and His Messenger and Ulil Amri? Think about that, brothers. Okay? Another thing we need to we need to ponder over. This chapter, chapter 4, called An-Nisa. This chapter talks extensively about women and also warfare. There's a lot of verses talking about warfare. Have a look at this. It discusses women, talks about Jews, it talks about Munafiqs, hypocrite, and warfare. It talks quite extensively about warfare. Now, if you jump to verse 83, I think it was, of the same chapter, look what it reads here. This is very interesting. And when there comes to them something about public security or fear, they spread it around. They spread these rumors, right? But if they had referred it back to the messenger, Radduhu ila Rasuli, or to those who are in authority. Now, look at this. Wa ila ulil amri. See, here it's got ulil amri, and here it's got ulil amri. In this verse, why didn't it say... If only they had referred it back to Allah and His Messenger and the Ulil Amri. See, Allah is omitted here in this verse. Do you know why? Referring to something to Allah and His Messenger carries one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. See, they try to fool you to make you think that you need to understand them independently and separately. Let's go back over here. At the time of the Messenger, whenever there was a problem, any problem at all, how did they go about it? Did they first go, okay, let's go collect whatever we have of the Qur'an. Okay, we can't find the answer. Let's, let's go collect what we have of the Sunnah. Is that how it was? Whenever they have had a problem, they went straight to the Messenger. Oh, Messenger of God, we are having such and such a problem. What should we do? Because the Messenger is the one receiving the answers from Allah, the verses from Allah. So the, whenever they referred something to the Messenger, this is equivalent to referring it back to Allah. Because as long as the Messenger was alive, he was receiving the revelation from Allah. This is not two separate uh, commands or two separate obligations or two separate duties, brothers and sisters. It carries one and the same meaning. So coming back to this where it says, if they refer back to the messenger and, and those in authority, then the ones who could draw correct conclusion for would have known about it. And if not, if it not of the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, you would have followed shaitan except for a few. Now if you keep re reading the verses after this, it talks extensively about warfare. This was in a time of conflict. Brothers and sisters, so the Ulil Amri were who exactly? Think about this. If the, if the verses are talking about warfare, so the Ulil Amri, if you put two or two together, this means those who are in command of military positions, brothers and sisters. What else can this possibly mean? How can this be referring to scholars and the 12 Imams? This makes no sense whatsoever, brothers and sisters. 
Think about it from the from the perspective from the time of Revelation. Is this how they believe? Is this how they understood it? Was it only only the scholars amongst them? Okay, which scholars are we talking about? Are we talking about the Hanifi scholars, the Maliki scholars, the Ash'aris, the Maturidis, the Salafis, the Han who are we talking about? Brothers, the Ulil Amri, those in authority, those in command, must have been referred to those given military positions. Because the messenger, because it's in a context of war, the messenger Muhammad, he couldn't be at all places at once, could he? So he must have assigned certain individuals in military uh, in military command. He would have said, you know, uh, you Abu Bakr, I want you to take care of these people. You Uthman, I want you to look after these people. This must be in a context of military power. Military positions, brothers and sisters. What else can this possibly be talking about? To say this is referred to scholars and 12 Imams is absurd. It makes no sense, brothers. Especially if you refer to this verse here. Whenever there was a time of conflict, if only they had referred it to the messenger and those in authority. This is in a time of conflict and warfare, brothers and sisters. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'll urge you to look at these verses yourself. Even read the context. Read the whole chapter. It talks extensively about warfare. This is important, brothers. Let's go to the next verse. Okay. Chapter 4, verse 64. And we did not send any messenger except to be obeyed by the permission of Allah. وَبَا أَرْسَلَّ مِنْ رُسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We have not sent any messenger except to be obeyed. Messengers were sent to the earth to be obeyed. So what did obedience to Jesus and John the Baptist, alayhi salam, mean? What did obedience to them mean? So at the time of Jesus was a obey Allah, obey Allah means obey the Injil, and obey the messenger Jesus means to obey the hadiths and the sunnah of Jesus. Is that what it meant? What about John the Baptist? Is that what it meant also? What about messengers before him? He are clearly saying Allah has not sent any messenger except to be obeyed. Allah sends the messenger with guidance, with the wahi, so that the people can obey Allah. But how do they obey Allah? <clears throat> Here's the golden formula. This verse should be printed out and stuck on every wall in every single house. Chapter 4, verse 80. May you to a rasoola. Rasoola. Atta. May you to a rasoola. Atta Allah. Those who obey the messenger have obeyed Allah. But those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a guardian. Those who obey the messenger have obeyed Allah. They're trying to pro they, they've programmed us to believe that obedience to Allah is one thing and obedience to the messenger is a separate thing. Really? But here's the formula. The people here, again, think and ponder brothers and sisters. At the time of revelation here, take the messenger out of the equation. How would these people obey Allah, brothers and sisters? How? It's impossible. The only way these people could have obeyed Allah was through the messenger. Was there any other way, brothers and sisters? But they program you to believe, no, they're two separate obediences. You can literally say, literally, literally. Hope you guys can see that. Obey Allah is achieved by obeying the messenger. You can literally say, obey Allah equals obey messenger. Literally. But they say, no, 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 no. Obey Allah is the Quran. Obey the messenger is something else. SubhanAllah, brother. Do you see how we've been fooled? We've been indoctrinated to believe something else. Obedience to Allah is only ever possible and achievable by obeying the messenger. Subhanallah, think about that brothers. Let's go to our next verse. Chapter 5 verse 67. O messenger, announce that which has been revealed to you from your Lord. Ya ayyuhar rasul, balig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik. O messenger, convey what's been revealed to you from your Lord. How did the people here hear about what, what was revealed to them from their Lord? Through the messenger brothers. You cannot separate what Allah has revealed from the messenger. They are inseparable brothers and sisters. And if you do not, you have not conveyed his message. Rasalatuhu. His message. The messenger Muhammad conveyed Rasala of Allah. The messenger, the message of Allah. So if they 
obey and follow the messenger that obeyed and followed Allah, brothers and sisters. Without the messenger in the equation, this is impossible. It's impossible. How can you separate what Allah has revealed from the messenger? They are inseparable, brothers and sisters. This is where the fool, the fool, the people to believe that. Chapter 5, verse 92. And obey Allah, wa ati Allah, and obey the messenger, wa ati Rasulah. And beware. And if you turn away, then know that upon our messenger is only the responsibility for clear notification. فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا عَلَى رَسُولِ الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ Upon the messengers, you see how obey Allah and obey his messenger is tied together with the messenger delivering the message. So if we were there at that time, the messenger delivered the message, if we believed the messenger and followed him, have, have we obeyed the messenger? Yes. Have we obeyed Allah? Yes. Is this two separate obediences? No. The only way you can obey Allah in the first place is through the messenger. May you to Rasulah faqad ata Allah. Is there any other formula, brothers, that you can find in the Quran? Obey Allah and obey the message is tied together with following the message, obeying the message. It's as simple as that, brothers and sisters. Here's another verse. Chapter 24, verse 54. Say, obey Allah, ati Allah, and obey the message, ati Rasulah. But if you turn away, then upon him is that due which he's been charged, and upon you is that which you've been charged. And if you obey him, tuti'uhu, if you obey him, the messenger, you will be rightly guided. And there is not upon the messenger except the responsibility for clear notification. وَمَا عَلَى رُسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ So at that time, if the messenger delivered the message to them, if they submit now, we hear, and we obey, they've obeyed the messenger, have they not? And they've also obeyed Allah. But is this two separate obediences? Obedience to Allah is only ever achievable through the messenger. You cannot possibly say this is two separate obediences. Here's another verse. Chapter 46, verse 9. Say, the messengers told us, say, I am not something original among the messengers. Ma kuntu bid'a, the word bid'a, min al rusuli. I'm nothing new among the messengers. The messenger Muhammad is told to say this. I'm nothing new among the messengers. Nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow what, that which is revealed to me. And I am not but a clear warner. The messengers told us, say, I'm nothing new among the messengers. What the messengers before me were, I'm the same. I'm nothing new. And I only f follow what was revealed to me, the wahi. So following the messengers, follow the wahi. Obeying the messengers, obey uh, the revelation that came to him. That's what it means. This is not two separate or independent obediences, brothers and sisters. Here's another verse. Chapter 64, verse 12. And obey Allah, ati Allah, and obey the messenger, wa ati al But if you turn away, then upon our messenger is only the duty of clear notification. Obedience to Allah and obedience to the messenger is tied together with the messenger Muhammad, salam, delivering the message. So when he, if he delivers the message and you accept the message, you've accepted him as a messenger and you've accepted what Allah has revealed to him. You can't possibly believe in the message that came down to him and reject him as a messenger. Think about this. Nor can you accept him as a messenger and reject the verses that came down to him. Obey Allah and his messenger are one and the same obedience brothers and sisters. Do you see how shaitan has fooled us to believe this? Have a look at this verse here. Chapter 3, verse 52 to 53. This is talking about Jesus and Islam. Look at these verses. But when Jesus felt persistence of disbelief from the, from the, Hawa, from the uh, disciples, he said to them, Who are my supporters for Allah, for the cause of Allah? Man ansari illallah. My helpers for Allah, for the cause of Allah. Think about this. The disciples said, We are supporters for Allah. Think, brothers. Nahnu we ansarullah. We are Allah's helpers. Think, brothers. Why couldn't the disciples just say, we will help you, you Jesus, we will help you for the cause of Allah. Instead, they say, we will help Allah. Think about this. Imagine this is Jesus, alayhi salam, okay? and the disciples are here. Jesus doesn't say, so, who are my helpers for the cause of Allah? They say, we will help Allah. Why didn't they say, we will help you for, for Allah? Because... Helping the messenger is the same as helping Allah, brothers and sisters. Whether the disciples here said, think about this, whether they said, we will help you for the cause of Allah, or we will help Allah, as it says here, or 
we will have Allah and His Messenger all these carry one and the same meaning. Let that sink in for one moment. Helping the Messenger is the same as helping Allah. Remember that formula? May you take a Rasulah fakat ata Allah. You can apply this to anything. Those who believe in the Messenger have believed in Allah. Those who follow the Messenger have followed Allah. Those who obey the Messenger have obeyed Allah. And the opposite is true. Those who reject the Messenger, they've, they've also rejected uh, Allah, haven't they? They've rejected what Allah sent down. Those who turned their back on the Messenger have also turned their back on Allah. These are not two separate things, is it, brothers and sisters? Think about it. This reminds me of so many other verses in the Quran. For example, there's a verse that says, Those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger, it says, uh, be, uh, Think about this. Well, waging war against Allah and His Messenger, are these two separate wars? Two separate independent wars? Think about it. How would the people here go to war with Allah in the first place? Is that even possible? But they went to war with the Messenger, didn't they? Those who rejected him, they went to war with him. So, waging war against the Messenger is waging war against Allah, isn't it? Think about that. There's another verse that says, Those who emigrate to Allah and His Messenger, Muhajiran illallahi wa rasulihi. Think about this. Well, was this two separate immigrants? Did they first emigrate to Allah and then separately, independently uh, emigrate to the Messenger? Think about this, brothers. It's understood as one of the same meaning, brothers. There's another verse that says, Kathabullaha wa rasulahu. Those who lie to Allah and His Messenger. Think about this. How can you lie to Allah? But they lied to the Messenger, didn't they? The Munafiks. They lied to His face. But he didn't know of it. Those who lie to the messenger have lied to Allah. Do you see this carries one and the same meaning? There's another verse which says, يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Those who abuse Allah or harm Allah and his messenger. How do you harm Allah? Think about it. But the people at the time, those who rejected him, they abused the messenger, didn't they? By abusing the messenger, they've abused Allah, haven't they? Think about this. It carries one and the same meaning. Otherwise, we'll have to say this is two separate obediences, two separate um, uh, uh, obligations, two separate rulings. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense, brothers and sisters. The messenger doesn't bring anything new to the table. Think about this, brothers. A brother pointed, pointed this out on YouTube. He says, if a person comes and brings something to the table, let's just say you, you know, you're having a business meeting, you come and bring something to the table. So, look, we should implement this. Is, is this not partnership? Like, this means you, you, like you're like a partner, right? You're bringing something to the table. But if you're a person, you just you do what you're told, you're a servant. Think about this. Which category, category did Muhammad fall in? Did he bring something additional to what Allah has revealed to him? Or was he a servant of Allah? Think about this. Which category does the Prophet Muhammad fall in? Think about that, brothers. SubhanAllah. See? We will help Allah. Whether they say we will help you for, for Allah, or we help Allah, or we, or we will help Allah and His Messenger. They carry one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. Here's another verse to prove this. Chapter 61, verse 14. O you who believe, be supporters of Allah. Ansarullah, support. Be supporters of Allah, right? As when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the disciple, who are my supporters for Allah? Man ansari illallah. Look, you see the verse says, help Allah at the beginning, right? Help Allah. And then Jesus said, help me for the cause of Allah. The disciples said, we are supporters of Allah. Ansarullah. Do you see where I'm getting at, brothers? Whether the disciples said, we will help Allah, or we will help you for the sake of Allah, or we are helpers of Allah and His Messenger, all these carry one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. I can't stress this enough. Whenever it says Allah and His Messenger, this is not two separate things, brothers. We are not to understand this independently or separately. Here's another verse. Look at this. Chapter 59, verse 4. That is because they opposed Allah. They rejected or opposed Allah and His Messenger. Shaqullaha wa rasulahu. See? Shaqullaha wa rasulahu. Listen. And whoever opposes Allah, yushaqillaha, then indeed Allah is severe in penalty. Are you with me so far? Okay? Look at this other verse. It reads exactly the same in Arabic. However, there's one difference. Chapter 8, verse 13. That is because they oppose Allah and His Messenger. Same wording here. Shaqullaha wa rasulahu. Exactly the same. And whoever opposes Allah and His Messenger. Do you see that, brothers? 
and his messenger. See here, it's it's only got Allah here. Here it's got and his messenger. Ya yushakillaha wa rasulahu. Indeed, Allah is severe penalty. Exactly the same in Arabic. So this one just mentions Allah. This one mentions Allah and his messenger. Because they carry one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. Please let this sink in. Those who help the messenger have helped Allah. Those who obey the messenger have obeyed Allah. Those who follow the messenger have obeyed Allah. Those who reject the messenger have rejected Allah. Those who turn the back on the messenger have reject have turned the back on Allah. Those who wage war against the messenger have waged war against Allah. This is how it's understood, brothers and sisters. But they try to separate the two, like these are, these are two separate commands, two separate duties. SubhanAllah. Now, for more information about Obey Allah and His Messenger verses, brothers, I please urge you to go to that video, Obey Allah and His Messenger. I'll go into so much more detail in that video. Please go to that video for more information. Now, those verses which make mention of Allah and His Messenger regarding judging, judgment. Now, the first verse I'm going to quote, and I've also done another video on this, and I go into a lot more detail called how to judge. Please refer to that video. Okay, chapter 24, verse 51. The only statement of the true believers when they are called Allah and His Messenger, like the obey Allah and His Messenger verses, right? To judge between them. Du'u illa Allahi wa rasulihi liyahkuma baynahum. Is that they say we hear and we obey. Think about this. When Allah and His Messenger, Allah and His Messenger to judge between them, the word Liyahkuma comes from Ha Kafim, and I'll you know, go through that in more in detail in that video. How to judge, please refer to that. Ha Kafim, which means to exercise authority, to command, to give judgment, or to be wise. Okay? So here it says to judge between them. Okay? They say we hear and we obey. Like the, how the traditional say, obey Allah and His Messenger are two separate obediences. Is this verse here referring to two separate judgments? Think about this, brothers. Are we saying, is this verse saying, that there are two entities, one passing down judgments and another separate uh, entity passing out his own judgments. Think about that, brothers. Let me give you an example. Is it possible that Allah would say, look, say something like, okay, I find this person guilty. I say guilty. Does he then turn to his messenger and say, oh, messenger, what is your verdict? Guilty or not guilty? Is this possible? Think about this, bro. And I'm going to quote you verse after verse. Is this possible? Is this two separate judgments or two separate judges? Like you obey Allah and His Messenger verses. Have a look at this, this verse here. Chapter 2, verse 213. I'm not going to read all of this. You can read it in your own time, brothers and sisters, because of time. Mankind was of one religion before the deviation. And Allah sent prophets and Nabiyina, plural, prophets, as bringers of good tidings and warnings, and sent down with them the scripture, Al-Kitab. In truth, to judge between the people of that concern in which they differ. See, the book is mentioned together with judgment. And you find this throughout the Quran. Liyakma. See, the same words before. When Allah, when they called Allah's messenger to judge between them. Liyakma. Ha-kafim. To, to exercise authority or to judge. See, the book is used together with judgment. All the prophets were sent with scripture to judge between the people. Here's another verse. Chapter 3, verse 23. Have you not seen those who have been given the portion of scripture... They have been invited to the book of Allah, Kitabillah. See, the book to judge. See, liyahkuma, the same word, liyahkuma. They dispute when a party of them turn away. See, the messenger was sent the book, the wahid, the book. Allah refers to the revelation as the book to judge between the people. Does a messenger make independent judgments outside of what Allah has revealed to him? Think about this. Here's another verse. Chapter 4, verse 65, one of the most abused verses, subhanAllah. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them. And they're finding themselves no resistance against your decision and accept them with full submission. The word here, yuhakkimuka, comes from the same root as the word liyahkuma, brothers. This is important. Liyahkuma, ha kafmin, same root, to judge. It comes from that same root, to judge between them. But how did the Prophet judge between them, brothers and sisters? The messenger, how did he judge between them? Did he just make things up? Did he say, oh, look, I think you should do this and I think you should do that. Is that what he did? In fact, the Prophet did do things outside what was revealed to him. And Allah tells him off for it. I'm going to show you in a moment. He gets told off for it. In the same chapter at verse 105, this is no coincidence. See, he says to judge between them. But how did he judge? In the same chapter, verse 105, it reads, Surely we have sent down to you the book 
Al-Kitab was sent down to you, the book. Al-Kitab. For what reason? In truth that you might judge لِتَخْكُمَ هَكَفِينَ Judge between men by which, Allah, by which Allah is showing you. So the Messenger Muhammad judging, he does it by the book. This is no coincidence. It's in the same chapter, brothers. He judges by the book. The book that was revealed to him. Book, judgment. Book, judgment. Like the verses before. Muhammad and some judge by what was revealed to him of the book. And I've shown you in that in part one. Revelation, what was revealed to Prophet Muhammad and I've proved it without a doubt that the only thing in Revelation was the Quran and nothing else. However, Allah communicated non-verbally to the Messenger via dreams, manami, and visions, a ru'ya outside of the Revelation as well. Okay? Here's another verse, chapter 6, verse 114. Look how powerful this is. Say, then is it other than Allah I should seek as judge? Hakaman. Well, it is he who has revealed to you the book. Explained in detail. The messenger is told to say, to say to the people. Do you want me, the messenger, do you want me to seek other than Allah as a judge? When he is sent down the way, he is sent down to the book, explained in detail. So the messenger judged by what Allah has revealed to him. Simple as that. Do you want me to seek a judge other than Allah? Think about this. Here's another verse, chapter 12, verse 40. You worship not beside them except me and them. You have named them. You and your fathers, for which Allah has sent down no authority. Look at this. Legislation or judgment is not but for Allah. In al hukmu illa lillah. The word hukmu comes from that same root. Ha kafmin, which means exercise authority. Judgment. Judging. The judgment belongs to none but Allah. Think about that. It doesn't say in al hukmu illa lillah wa rasulihi. It doesn't. It doesn't in this verse. Judgment is for none but Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but Him. That is a correct religion, but most of the people do not know. Judgment is for none but Allah. Think about that, brothers. Here's another verse to reflect upon. Chapter 13, verse 41. Have you not seen that which we set upon the land, reducing it from its borders? And Allah decided. Wallahu yahkumu ha kafim. The authority, the judgment, the command. Allah decides or commands. There is no adjuster of His decision. Look at this in Arabic. La mu'aqqiba li hukmihi. See, yahkuma li hukmihi share the same root. Ha kaf me. Which means to exercise authority or to judge or to command. Allah does not change. He does not adjust his judgment. And Allah judges. Allah judges alone. Here's another verse. Let this verse really sink in. Let it really sink in. Chapter 18 verse 26. Say, Allah is most known of how long they remained. He has knowledge of the unseen, of the heavens and the earth. How seeing is he and how hearing. They have not besides him any protector. And he shares not in his legislation or his judgment with anyone. Look, look at the Arabic brothers. Wala yushriku. Yushriku is this uh, making partners or this sharing. He does not have a partner. Fi hukmihi ha kafim. In his authority or his judgment or his command. He does not share it with anyone. Ahada, anyone. Think, brothers. Remember the verse at the beginning? They are called to Allah and His Messenger to judge between them. But is this two separate judgment, brothers? Because here, look, Allah does not share. He does, Allah does not share His hukum with anyone. He does not share it. So how do we understand these verses, brothers? Remember the verse before? In il hukwa illa lillah. The judgment is for none but Allah. Think about this, brothers. He shares not. Actually, this reminds me of another verse in uh, chapter 4. I can't remember which verse it was. Allah does not uh, forgive that you ascribe partners with. The word yushra, yushraka. Yushriku, yushraka. It comes from the same root. He does not forgive this that you, do, that you associate partners with him. He says Allah does not have a partner in his hukum. In his judgment, he does not have a partner. He does not share this with anyone. So when you go back, when he says. When Allah and His Messenger have have um, uh, uh, have judged between them, how do we understand this, brothers and sisters? This is just like the obey Allah and His Messenger verses. This is not two separate obediences; it's one of the same obedience. That's why Allah sends down His judgment, His hukum, in the form of revelation to His Messenger, and the Messenger simply conveys what Allah judged to the people. Simple. Wallahi, once I understood this, the whole Quran started making sense, brothers and sisters. 
Allah sends down his hukum, his judgment in the form of revelation to his messenger. And the messenger conveys what Allah has passed as judgment. Simple. Allah, the messenger doesn't give his own judgment, brothers and sisters. He doesn't. He only does what he's commanded to do. Simple. So this is not two separate judgment. It's one and some judgment. Allah sends down the judgment and in a form of revelation and the messenger conveys. Remember that verse? Ya ayyuhal rasul ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbika Convey what you've received from your Lord. Remember? That's all the messenger does. And he judges the people by what Allah sent down to him. The scripture, the book, the Quran. So when we go back to that verse, remember? When they call to Allah and his messenger to judge between them. Remember, just recapping those verses. Prophets were sent a book to judge between the people. Kitab li yahkuma hakaf mim. The people are invited to the book of Allah to settle or to judge their matter. Remember? Li yahkuma, same root. They make you Muhammad or some ajay, you haqqi muka, you haqqi muka, to judge between uh, the people in all their disputes. Same chapter reads, we sent down to you the book. Sent down to you the book to judge between the people. Muhammad didn't judge on his own accord. In fact, he did in, in, in one in, instance, he, he did try to make something uh, haram for himself, and Allah tells him what, and I'm going I'm to get to that a little later. Chapter 6, verse 114. Is it other than Allah that I should seek as a judge? Think about this. The messenger is told to say, do you want me to seek a judge other than Allah, other than what's revealed to me? Of the scripture. When it is he who sent down to you the book. The book explained in detail. Brothers, reflect and ponder over this. Here's another verse. Remember, in il illa lillah, legislation or the judgment, the command is not is for none but Allah. And finally, oh sorry, second last, la mu'akiba li hukbihi, hakaf in same root. There's no adjusting or changing his decision. When Allah says guilty to something, does the messenger have a say in it? Does it say, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, my Lord. I say he's not guilty. <laughs> or, or he's guilty. Is this possible? Is he, Are we talking about two separate entities passing down judgments? Think about this. Finally, وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا Allah does not share his hukum, hukum with anyone. So the fact that it says Allah and his messenger, this carries one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. Just like to obey Allah and his messenger verses, it carries one and the same meaning. Subhanallah. Verses, now the next uh, section, verses that mention Allah and his messenger making haram. There's that famous verse which the Muslims love to abuse. Have a look at this verse. Chapter 9, verse 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah and the last day and do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful. وَلَا يُحَرِّمُونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ What Allah and His Messenger have made haram. Again, is this, are we talking about two separate entities making, making decisions about what's halal and haram? So does Allah say, for example, for an example, does it say, I'm making this haram? And then does it turn to His Messenger and say, Oh Messenger, what is your verdict? Is this halal or haram? Is this possible? Just like the judgment verses. Allah passes down a judgment. Does it then turn to his messenger and ask for his opinion? No. Allah alone uh, is the judge. Yeah. When Allah and his messenger have made haram. Think about this. Is this two separate entities deciding what's halal and deciding what's haram? Think about this. Have a look at the verses here. Chapter 5 verse 1. O oh, you who believe, fulfill all contracts. Lawful for you are the animals of graving livestock, except for what that which has been recited to you. Uhillat lakum, lawful for you, bihimatul an ami illa ma yutla, recited, alaykum, recited to you. Say the messenger reciting these verses to him. Lawful for you is what has been recited to you in this Quran. Remember the wahi coming down to the messenger, and the messenger conveys this to the people. Say lawful for you uh, 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 is this. Hunting not being permitted while you're inside of ikram. Indeed, Allah ordains what he, what he intends. Okay, here's another verse. Chapter 5, verse 3. Okay, Prohibited uh, to you, or hurrimat alaykum, are dead animals, blood, the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah. Now, I'll let you lead the rest of the verse in your own time. There are four things mentioned here that are haram, brothers, to eat. 
Now, if you go to the end of the verse, it says, This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as your religion. If you continue to read, it says, But whoever is forced by severe hunger with no inclination to sin, then indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. This verse here, I've completed Islam and I've completed, I've completed my favor upon you, is in the context of food. Think about this. Allah has completed this in the Quran. He's completed it. Something complete doesn't need something to be added or subtracted from it. It's complete. It's finished. It's done and dusted. Okay? And there's four things mentioned here. Subhanallah, regarding food. Now, here's another verse. Chapter 5, verse 87. O oh, you who believe, do not prohibit the good things, but Allah has made lawful. Ma ahallallahu. Do not prohibit this to you. And do not transgress. Indeed, Allah does not like the transgressors. See, it talks about Allah prohibiting, Allah making halal for you. Here's another verse. Chapter 6, verse 118 and 119. So eat that meat which uh, the name of Allah has been uh, mentioned, if you are believers in his verses. And why should you not eat that which the name of Allah has been mentioned, while he has explained in detail, fossil, explained in detail to you what he has forbidden to you. Ma harra ma alaykum, except that which you have been compelled. And indeed, do many lead others astray through their own inclination, without knowledge. Indeed, your Lord, he is the most knowing of the transgressors. Do you see how it mentions Allah has made haram for you? Okay, here's another verse. I love this. This verse blew my socks off. Have a look at this. Chapter 6, verse 145. Say, the messengers told us, say, I do not find la ajidu within that which is revealed to me. That which is revealed to me, I do not find. Uhiya, wauha ya root, wauha ya, reveal to me. Muharramam, anything haram to the one who would eat it, illa except. Remember the verse before it mentioned those four things? Here it says exactly, it mentions those four things again. Be it a dead animal, blood spilled, the flesh of swine, and, dead, and anything dedicated to other than Allah. Four things mentioned, like, like in the other verse there. Think about this, brothers and sisters. I do not find within that which is revealed to me, or here, revealed to me, anything haram except these four things. And there's four verses in the Quran, there's two other verses that make mention of these four exact things that are haram. If you go to the hadith literature, brothers, subhanallah, there are so many halal and harams in the hadith literature, so many. Just from the top of here, I'll give you an example. There's, there's something in... Um, uh, I think it was in Bukhari, I can't remember which hadith collection. It says that the Prophet forbade, in the hadith, domestic donkeys. And he also forbade any animal with fangs or sharp teeth, in the hadith literature. There's something that halals and harams there. But here, the message is told to say, I do not find within that which is revealed or inspired to me. Well, were the hadiths inspired to the Prophet? Were they revealed to the, to the Prophet, these hadiths? Think about this, brothers. I don't find anything haram except these four things. But the hadith literature are filled with uh, halals and harams. How do these hadith, these sahih hadiths, fit into this equation? How? Tell me. How do those halals and harams outside of the Quran fit into this verse here? Subhanallah. And yet they tell us that the sahih hadith is, is, uh, goes hand in hand with the, with the Quran. No, they don't, brothers. No, they don't. They contradict the Quran as it does here in this verse. Subhanallah. I do not find anything haram except these. This is what the messenger is told to say. And yet, what, are we to just disregard these verses and accept the Sahih hadiths? Here's another verse, chapter 6, verse 150 to 151. Say, O Muhammad, alayhi salam, bring forth your witnesses who will testify that Allah has prohibited this. Anna Allah harrama hadha. Allah has prohibited this. And if they testify, do not testify with them. And do, and do not follow the desires of those who do not deny our verses and those who do not believe in the hereafter while they equate others with their Lord. Say to them, look, look at this. Come, ta'ala, come. I will recite to you what your Lord has made prohibited. The messengers told to say, ta'ala, come. Atulu ma harrama rabbukum. Come, he's told us to tell the people here. Come, I will recite to you what your Lord has made prohibited. In the Quran, of course. Remember the verse before? I do not find anything haram to eat except these four things. Look at it. I will recite you what your Lord has made haram. That's what it's told to say here. How do the hadiths fit into these verses? Tell me. Subhanallah, brothers. 
He commands that you not associate anything with him and the parents could treat him and do not kill the children out of poverty will provide for you and for them and do not approach the immorality that is apparent of them and what is concealed and do not kill the soul which Allah has prohibited. Haram Allah, what Allah has prohibited. Except what Lig wrote. This he has instructed you that you may use reason. Look at these verses, brothers. Look at these verses. Subhanallah. Here's another verse. Chapter 10, verse 59. Say, Have you seen what Allah has sent down to you of provision, of which you have made some lawful and some unlawful? فَجَعَلْتُمْ مِنْهُ حَرَامًا وَحَلَالًا But this is so common, especially in Sunni Islam. The sheikhs and the mullahs, halal, haram, halal, haram, subhanallah, just exalt the pages of books on this. Say, has Allah permitted you to do so? Or do you invent someone about Allah? Look how powerful, Look, such a harsh warning here. Why do you make it halal, haram? Has Allah sent an authority for this? Here's another verse. Chapter 16, verse 115 to 116. He is only forbidden to you. Innama harrama alaykum. He's only forbidden to you. Remember those four things? Dead animal, flesh of swine, blood spilled, and anything dedicated to Allah, of, of an Allah. And at the end of the verse it says, do not, it says it, and do not say about with your tongues a sort of untruth. Do not say this. This is lawful and this is, and that is unlawful. Hadha halalun wa hadha haramun. It says do not do this. Don't say loosely with your tongue. This is halal, this is haram. It says don't do this. To invent falsehood about Allah. Indeed, whoever invents falsehood about Allah will never be successful. Just look at the sheikhs and the mullahs and the hadith literature, brothers. Halal, haram, halal, haram. There's a whole, there's a whole library of this. Look what the Quran says. I only I find four things haram to eat. Here's another verse. Chapter, oh yeah, chapter 59, verse 7 to 8. This is another abused verse of the Quran. And whatsoever the messenger has given you, whatever he's giving you, take it. And whatever he forbids you, nahakum, refrain from. So whatever he's giving you, take it. Whatever he's referring you, uh, leave. So here they try to trick you and say, oh, the messenger, this is talking about the hadith, did you? You have to refer to the hadith and the sunnah. Is that really what this verse is talking about, brothers and sisters? I fear Allah, indeed, Allah is severe penalty. Let's have a look at the context, shall we? The verse just before this. In fact, in fact, I urge you, brothers and sisters, start from verse 1. Go all the way to verse 1 and read all the way up to, uh, up, up to verse 8. And what Allah has restored to his messenger from the people of the towns, it is for Allah and for the messenger and for the near relatives and the orphans and the stranded traveler so that it will not be a perpetual distribution among the rich from among you. So what is this talking about? The messenger is distributing what? Spoils, brothers. That's what it's talking about. Whatever the messenger, Allah has given the messenger spoils, right? Whatever the messenger gives you of the spoils, take it. And whatever he forbids you, leave it so that it doesn't become a distribution among the rich. So there's this justice and equity, this fairness here. And the verse right after it continues. For the poor immigrant who are expelled from their homes and their properties, seeking bounty from Allah and his approval, and supporting Allah and his messenger, there's also a share for them. Those are the truthful. What is this verse talking about, brothers and sisters? It's crystal clear. It's talking about spoils. But they pluck this verse out and say, Brother, it's the hadith and the sunnah. Here's another verse. Have a look at this. Chapter 66, verse 1. O Prophet, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, Lima tuharrimuna ma ahallallahu lak? Why do you pro prohibit for yourself? Why do you prohibit for yourself what Allah has made lawful for you? Think about that. Seeking the approval of your wife and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Obviously the Prophet, outside of this revelation, he tried to make haram for himself something. Now what this, what this, uh, or what it was, we don't know exactly. Okay, it's not important at this stage. But the point is the Prophet tried to make something for himself haram. And Allah tells him off for it. Think about this. But don't, don't, doesn't the verse, remember the verse at the beginning? What Allah and his messenger, what Allah and his messenger made haram. But here it says, O oh, Prophet, why do you make yourself haram what Allah's made halal for you? So again, is this two separate entities, um, you know, given, given out separate laws? You know, discerning what's halal and haram. Is it two separate entities? No, it's Allah alone who was the lawmaker. He sends down his law in the form of revelation, wahi, 
to his messenger and the messenger conveys Allah's law to the people. Brothers, isn't this crystal clear? Isn't this crystal clear? Lock the judgment verses, lock the obedience verses. There's only one obedience, there's only one judgment, there's only one lawmaker and that's Allah himself. But all this is done through the messenger because Allah sent the messenger to the people. Okay, coming back to that verse again. What Allah and His Messenger have made haram. Think about this. Remember, just recapping those verses. Lawful for you are uh, uh, livestock, except what is recited to you. Recited. Prohibited to you are dead animals, blood, flesh of swine, and anything dedicated to Allah, anything other than Allah. Do not prohibit the good things that Allah has made lawful. Remember the messages told say, I do not find la ajidu. Fima yuhiya ilayya muharraman anything revealed or inspired to me but a haram except these four things. How does the hadith fit into this equation, brothers? It's impossible. Unless you toss these verses behind your back like the Bani Israel. If you want to do that, be my guest. Remember chapter 6, verse 151? Come, come, ta'ala, come, I'll recite to you what your Lord has made forbidden. O oh, Prophet, why do you prohibit for yourself what Allah has made lawful for you? Think about this, brothers. The Prophet himself, the Messenger, he couldn't decide any uh, what was halal haram for himself, let alone for other people. If he couldn't decide what was haram for himself, how could he de de decrease something haram for someone, somebody else? Think about this. So again, like the obedience and the judgment verses, Allah sends down his law in the, in the form of wahi to his Messenger, and the Messenger conveys this to the people. Ya ayyuhal rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbika. Convey what you've, what's been inspired to you from your Lord. It's as simple as that, brothers. This is not two separate entities being uh, to be obeyed. Two separate entities to be uh, uh, given out uh, separate judgments. Or two separate entities given out separate laws. This is impossible, brothers. Now, I'll go to the final topic here. Verse that mentions Allah and His Messenger decreeing a matter. This is another heavily abused verse. Have a look at this. Chapter 33, verse 36. It is not for a believer, man or woman, that when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter, that they should have any option in their decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has straight in the plan error. Look at the Arabic here. Qad Allahu wa Rasulahu amran. Look at these two words here. The word Qadr, which appears before Allah, and the word Amra, which appears after the Messenger. Now, I did a search for these two words, Qadr, Amra, and look what I found in the Quran. Have a look at this. Chapter 2, verse 117. Originator of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, Qadr, Amra, look at that. The word Qadr, Amra, appear here. He only says the word Kun, Fayakun. And you find this in three other verses. When Allah decrees a matter, He says, Kun fayukun. Think about this. But remember, the, the other word says, When Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter. But again, like the obedience and the judgment and the law giving verses, are these two separate uh, uh, entities passing down, uh, giving separate decrees? Does Allah decree something and then turn to His Messenger and say, what, is, what do you decree, O Messenger? Is this possible? Think about that, brothers. So when you come back to this verse, think. Lock the obedience and the judgment and the law given verses. Allah alone decrees the matters. Qada Amram. He sends down his decree in the form of revelation. Wahi. To his messenger and the messenger conveys what Allah has decreed to the people. Allahu Akbar. Look how crystal clear these are. Look at, it, look at this as well. I'm going to look what it's reads in the next verse. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, yatsillaha wa rasulahu, he's straight in the plain error. Now here it talks about the severity, how severe it is to, to disobey the Messenger. But look at the, what the verse right after this reads, excuse me. Chapter 33, verse 37, the verse straight after this. And remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one whom Allah has bestowed favor, and you bestowed favor, remember, Allah is reminding the Prophet, remember when you said this. Keep your wife and fear Allah. The Messenger Muhammad spoke these words outside of the Quran and Allah reminds him of this. Amsik alayka zawjaka wattaqillah. Now the Prophet told Zaid, his adopted son, 
He advised him. He, or you could even say he commanded him. He said, keep your wife. Hang on to your wife. Do not divorce her. Fear Allah. He even puts Allah's name in the... Wattaqillah. Fear Allah. Think about this. Why are you concealed within, your, within yourself that which Allah has to disclose? And you fear the people what Allah has more right to be that you fear him. Look at this. So when Zayd had no longer any need for her. Now if you look at this other translation. It said, and when Zayd divorced her. فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِّنْهَا وَطَرَى Hang on a minute. And when Zayd divorced her. Did, did Muhammad السلام, say to Zayd. Keep your wife and fear Allah. And Allah reminds him of this. Well, did Zayd obey? He didn't obey, did he? It's just that Zayd is here. Did he obey Muhammad a.s.? When Muhammad a.s. told him, Fear Allah and keep your wife. Do not divorce her. But Zayd disobeyed. Think about this. So what does that mean? What does Allah tell Zayd of here? He disobeyed. Because obedience is to the messenger of Allah. Not Muhammad, brothers and sisters, alayhi salam. I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way to Muhammad, alayhi salam. But I'm just trying to prove a point here. Allah reminds Muhammad, alayhi salam, that you said this. Keep your wife a fear. He even puts Allah's name into it. What taqilab? Ittaqallah. He said, fear Allah. But, but Zayd didn't listen. He, he, he didn't listen. See, he didn't uh, listen to the advice or the command of Muhammad, alayhi salam. But to the messenger... It's, it's unconditional obedience because the messenger is bringing the wahi. The messenger is bringing the wahi. That's what you have to obey. This is why throughout the Quran says, obey the messenger. It never says obey Muhammad. It doesn't say obey uh, uh, the, um, the prophet. It says obey the messenger. Obedience is to the messenger, brothers and sisters. And it's demonstrated perfectly in this verse here. See, again, let me just reiterate the importance of this. Whenever it makes mention of Allah and His Messenger together, this carries one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. This is not two separate obediences. This is not two separate judges. This is not two separate law, law, uh, laws. Nor is this two separate decrees. Allah sends down His, his uh, Wahi to the Messenger and the people obey the Messenger in order to obey the Wahi. It's simple. Allah sends down His, his, his judgment in the form of Scripture to his messenger, and the messenger conveys this to the people. Allah sends down his law in the form of scripture, and the messenger conveys this to the people. Allah makes the decree, and he sends down his decree in the form of scripture to his messenger, and the messenger uh, uh, delivers this to the people. It is as simple as this, brothers and sisters. This is not two separate obediences, or two separate commands, or two separate uh, obligations, or two separate uh, duties. It's nothing like this. It's one and the same meaning, brothers and sisters. I urge you to please reflect upon these. If you want more data, go to that video of mine, Obey Allah's Messenger, and also to that video uh, called How to Judge. Brothers, let this really sink in, brothers and sisters. This is so important. This is where the traditional Muslim tries to trick you. Obey Allah and His Messenger are two separate obediences, but they disregard, disregard the rest of the Quran. What about those other verses that make mention of Allah's Messenger? How do we understand these? I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. This, is, this was part two. Hopefully I'm going to be doing a part three. And that's regarding hadith and sunnah. Inshallah you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you guys stay well. Take care. And until next time. Assalamu alaikum.